Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to uh, talk a really quick uh, presentation about, uh, about Everest. Um, first, a few words about uh, myself. My name is Kai. I am, uh, yeah, I have a background in computer science and robotics, and I've been working at uh, Pionix on this uh, Everest project since early 2021. Uh, yeah. So, uh, what's Everest? It's a, a complete software stack for electric vehicle chargers, uh, which is running on uh, embedded Linux. Uh, it's released under the uh, Apache 2.0 license. And uh, the aim is to support many different hardware platforms, and you can also build your own. Um, yeah, it comes with uh, a lot of different modules already. So, you know, board support drivers for, for AC chargers, for DC chargers. Uh, it's already um, prepared for, or comes with high level communication support. So, uh, we have Slack implemented, uh, DeanSpec 71 to 1, and uh, ISO 1508 2 and uh, 20. There's uh, OCBP 201 and 1.6 support with drivers for power meters, for uh, DC power supplies, and so on. Um, yeah, the uh, project is primarily written in C17. There's uh, also language support for uh, JavaScript and Python, and relatively recently we also introduced support for writing your own modules in Rust. Yeah, this is a, a hopefully you can read the slide, but it doesn't really matter that much. Just going to talk about it a, a little bit, like the timeline, how this uh, project came to be. So the first ideas on uh, you know how to improve the uh, EV charging uh, ecosystem uh, began in like the end of 2020. Uh, the company Pionix, which started this project, was then founded in early 2021. And about a year later, uh, Everest was announced as the latest uh, Linux Foundation energy project, uh, with the source code being published in January 2022. Then we had uh, ChargeByte uh, join the technical steering committee. Um, and they also uh, started integrating it into their charge controllers. Uh, in, the <laughs> in the beginning of uh, 2023, we had different uh, manufacturers of uh, yeah, charging controllers and uh, suppliers of, uh, of chips and stuff like that uh, launched several like, dev kits that are Everest uh, enabled. And uh, in October, we held our first little conference with like 100 people. The, aptly named Everest Summit. There's always a bit of a mountaineering pun going on with some of the names. <laughs> um, yeah, and the, uh, pretty much the same time, we uh, had the U.S. Joint Office of Energy and Transportation as well as charger manufacturer Quello uh, join our technical steering committee. And yeah, that leaves us pretty much here at FOSDEM uh, 2024 and lots of exciting things uh, basically planned in 2024 as well. And yeah, this is a slide basically showing a lot of the like ecosystem around it already. Like we have involvement from like academia, from like enthusiasts just uh, wanting to work on this, but also like charging station uh, manufacturers, component suppliers, and like standardization bodies um, as well. Yeah, then uh, looking at uh, 2023. Uh, that was basically the year where the project kind of like took off, I would say. Uh, I, I held a uh, yeah, short talk at FOSDEM last year in, uh, in February, and you can see like the, the stream of contributions basically increasing over the whole year, um, which was pretty cool. Lots of like pull requests to review, lots of things to merge, and a lot of like community engagement, which uh, brings its own challenges with it. So uh, it was a bit of a fast growing community. like. Um, yeah, uh, in 2023, we basically only had like a mailing list, and at some point, it was basically unmanageable because of all the traffic. So we uh, kind of thought about how we want to like tackle this, how to make this uh, you know sustainable for the future. So we uh, thought about like moving to like a more like chat-based uh, solution with the Zulip chat, and you can kind of see like uh, the amount of messages kind of going down on the mailing list at the same time as you know our active users on the chat system got up. So I think this is on a good track, and we'll just have to see how this uh, works out over the next couple of uh, months. And uh, yeah, with this introduction of the uh, chat system, we kind of also 
created a new organizational structure to basically better engage with the community and manage this, uh, you know, growth. So uh, we introduced uh, different working groups. Um, one of them is, uh, you know, focus on car communication. So think ISO 1511A, CHAdeMO, and things like that. Another working group that I'm very active in is uh, the cloud communication, which is mainly focusing on OCPP at the moment. Then there's one uh, kind of talking about everything that's related to like the core of the Everest project itself, like builds tools and like the foundation of it, which has a bit of overlap with the CI and, uh, and testing uh, working group as well. And for everything there is not really a place for, there's a general and Q&A working group. And yeah, what I find really interesting is that it's kind of like a multimodal approach. So uh, we try to have uh, like chat streams where people can ask questions and engage in like a text-based way but also have like regular meetings, like video calls, uh, where people can also ask questions, and this seems to work pretty well. Um, yeah, let's uh, talk quickly about some uh, milestones in uh, 2023. We had like uh, set out a goal for monthly source code releases, and I think we more or less uh, hit that goal. We had like 10 monthly source code releases in a year. Uh, we also just released the January 2024 release. Uh, based on those uh, source code releases, we also um, yeah, provide a Yocto uh, layer for, for Kirkstone. And uh, we're also kind of thinking about maybe a new release strategy going forward. So maybe doing releases every two or three months and focusing more on like uh, stability of these releases. But this is still a bit up for debate at the moment. Um, yeah, some of the technical milestones of uh, 2023, we uh, worked pretty hard on uh, OCPP 201. Uh, so the core and advanced security profiles of that, they are uh, pretty much almost done, and some parties are already going into certification based on, uh, on that code. Um, and in general, there was very uh, active development on OCPP in, in the last year, as well as you know, OCPP 1.6, we also continuously improved that. And uh, yeah, on the car side of uh, things, car communication side, uh, we now have a pretty well tested uh, Dean spec as well as ISO 1511.8-2 implementation, including uh, plug and charge. And we had the first like successful uh, charging sessions with uh, ISO 1511.8-20 DC. And yeah, to, to make all of this you know work pretty well, we, we try to attend uh, lots of different uh, testing events, so we attended two uh, OCA, OCPP plugfests in Arnhem, uh, as well as three different like char and testables, which are focused on testing interoperability with ISO 5118. Some of you might remember this, like last year I talked uh, about the uh, the open hardware uh, that we also uh, launched, like at the end of 2022, early 2023, this Jacken uh, Yeti board. Uh, released under the CERN uh, open hardware license version 2. Um, but I'm not going to go uh, into any detail here. So if you're, if you're interested in that, there's like two talks I gave last year about this, uh, this hardware, and you can basically find everything that you, uh, that you need uh, on, on the GitHub page as well. Just another cool thing we, we built with this hardware is like a DIY DC charger. Uh, so we basically... Um, like this uh, with a wiring diagram very similar to, to this one that you can also find on, on GitHub uh, together and uh, use basically our AC controller hardware uh, to drive a functioning uh, DC charger. Uh, another cool thing uh, that we've been working on last year was is this what we call the, the micro megawatt charger. This is a handheld uh, DC charger powered by Everest. And it's, what's pretty cool about this is it's a functioning handheld DC charger. So, uh, you know, it started out with uh, just an early prototype in early 2023, still in a, in a box with, like, cables and everything, and uh, basically ended up in something that uh, fits inside of the box just for delivery. And what's cool about this is given that it's a functioning DC charger that is battery-powered, you actually have voltage on the DC pins, so you can uh, plug it into a car and you go basically through the whole 
uh, charging sequence with the car. Not just protocol testing, but you can actually go to the power delivery, and then most cars basically say, okay, I can't do much with one watt, I just stop. Um, so why do we do this? Uh, it's pretty cool to just walk around on like these festivals, but also like on the normal parking lot, uh, you know, with consent of the owners, to just uh, plug this into the car and generate log files and packet dumps and things like that. Um, and we also try to publish these on, uh, on GitHub uh, after we, we created them. Then we worked a little bit on uh, EV simulations, so we got a small children's electric quad, outfitted it with a CCS port, uh, runs a hacked up uh, Everest simulation on it, an EV simulation on it, and I think it's one of the uh, only children's electric quads that can charge on a commercial DC fast charger. Um, and we, we have some more plans with that in, in 2024, so uh, we want to have this EV simulation like natively in uh, C++, uh, include like an EV manager uh, in there, and uh, basically extend it with uh, ISO 1511.8-20 uh, support. And there's a little bit of work on going on on Chademo as well in the moment. And yeah, this brings me to the, the roadmap for 2024 in like no particular order. Like I just mentioned, the uh, native EV uh, simulation. Um, we want to complete our OCPP 201 implementation and start integrating OCPP 2.1 once the spec has been released. And there's going to be a lot of work going on on uh, ISO 1511.8-20. So we have a C++-based XE parser and, and parser generator in the works. We want to also include plug and charge there, uh, work on the AC unidirectional as well as uh, bidirectional um, power transfer. And there's also a first like Chademo uh, prototype for the charger side uh, in the works. And yeah, if this sounded interesting for you, um, yeah, here's how you can get involved. Basically, you can find documentation and how to get engaged with the project you know, like the mailing list, the group chats, and things like that uh, on everest.github.io. If you just want to look at the code, it's on github, github.com slash everest. And you can also find the open hardware under those two links. And yeah, I'm looking forward to your engagement, maybe contributions, and uh, thank you very much. I will, uh, have information about two things. The, the first is recuperation of energy when you are going down. The street is going down is the first question. Also the, the deceleration, motor deceleration with uh, tracks also in the system. And the other question is about uh, this, this uh, hardware or software for bicycle with electric assistance. Okay, I think uh, the first two is mostly like uh, on, on the EV side of things, like proper EV side of things. And I mean, we are mostly focused on EV charges. But for, for bicycles, uh, like uh, I think there's some work going on in some standardization bodies at the moment to basically specify uh, like charging for, yeah, for small bikes, for small like electric assisted bikes, as well as, uh, yeah, how do you call these things? Uh, like the little motorcycles that are electric part, the scooters and stuff like that. Yeah. Doesn't look like it. Yeah. Right. Wait, 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 wait. One more. One last. Uh, so how much has the open hardware helped with the project in terms of contributions or say a vendor adoption? I think it's really hard to, to quantify because um, people can just look at the designs and, and basically build stuff with it. Uh, like our company, we, we had some orders for like finished kits uh, of, of these things and I think we, we sold uh, quite a few of those. Um, but yeah, I think it, it helped. Um, but it's more like, you know, we, we see it as like a dev kit that people can just play around with. And it's, it's really not that complicated. I mean, uh, Especially, like, it's an AC AC charger, so you you need some you need some relays. You need a way to drive these relays, 
Uh, there's like a power meter on, on there, but usually if you want to build something for yourself, you don't need that. And um, then the high-level communication board, this needs like a modem, like a power line communication modem to talk with the car, but only if you want to do uh, iSwift 11.8. If you don't want to do this, you can just leave this out uh, as well and uh, build something really, really simple. Um, but for starting to hack around with, with Everest and all of these um, yeah, more advanced things, I think it, re it, it helped. Uh, and there's definitely some interest there. So. Thank you very much.